Look what we get to do. Really cool pictures and it's math at the same time. Please turn in your book to page 224 and let's look at reading picture graphs with scales. I don't think you got to much of this last year in first grade, so we're gonna start out pretty fast, but I think you're up for it because you guys are quick. This is a picture graph showing four different kinds of balls. There's a need for this in mathematics and in science and in all kinds of business applications for the rest of your life because you're gonna gather information and you're gonna need to show people what you gathered, but you can't just give them a whole bunch of pages with numbers on them. You kind of have to show them how they group together. So this kind of a scale and this kind of a picture graph becomes very helpful to you in real life. This one is a picture graph that's showing a soccer ball, basketball, rubber ball, and baseball. Obviously each dot here, this is the key. You're always gonna wanna check the key. The key says each dot stands for one ball. So that is super simple. That's like kindergarten could probably do that. How many dots are there here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So how many soccer balls did they find? Yep, you got it. That's pretty simple. Super simple, in fact. This is the symbol that stands for each ball. This is what you're gonna be looking at from now on very carefully. You cannot succeed in using these if you always assume that each dot means one. Because look over here. If you turn to page 225, you will see that you can change the key. And now one dot stands for mm -hmm, two balls. Well, now you're in trouble if you just count here. You're like one, two, three, four, five, six, only six soccer balls. Well, that's not true. There were 12 soccer balls found. If you count by twos, then you have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Or you could say one, two, three, four, five, six times two. And you would also get twelve. So you can either count by the number in the key, count by twos, or you can take the dots and multiply it by two. You see how your multiplication facts are going to come in handy in this chapter? Pretty good. So this you could see was six times two would be 12 soccer balls, just like we just talked about. Since the scale is two, you can multiply the number of dots by two. I said that again, just because we're turning the page here. If you had, if it asks you how many more soccer balls than basketballs are there, well, let's find out. If there are two more dots for soccer balls than basketballs. Let's find out. Let's go back over here. How many more basketballs than soccer? How many more basketballs than? How many more soccer balls than basketballs? So here you have each of these has four dots. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So how many more soccer balls do you have? Well, you don't just have two. You have two times two or two, four more soccer balls than basketballs. What if they asked you how many soccer balls and basketballs are there in all? Well, you would have to have your soccer balls, which we found out were 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, plus your basketball, 2, 4, 6, 8. So you'd have to have either 12 plus 8. Can you think of another way to do it? What if I count up all the dots I have together, what would I multiply it by? Each dot stands for two balls, so I could count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten balls times two for each dot. Ten times two, well, you guys all know that. That's 20. That's super simple. Do you see how you can use your key and your dots to answer all kinds of questions? Okay, so what about, let's skip to number five. The gym teacher buys more baseballs the number of rubber balls and the number of baseballs become the same. How many more baseballs does the teacher buy? Okay, so the gym teacher buys some more of these guys so that this number of baseballs becomes the same as all of the rubber balls. So how many more do we have to buy? Well, we know we have to match the dots, right? To make these two the same, the rubber balls and the baseballs. So if I'm gonna match the dots, I have, both of them have two, so I need one, two, three more dots to make them match. Would you agree? Okay, so three more dots, though, is how many balls? Is it three balls? No! Three more dots is three times two, which is six. 
two, four, six more balls. So you can use these pictures to ask all kinds of questions and they are going to. Let's look at this one here on page 227. I would have drawn these on the board and put them all up in front of you, but you know how my drawing is. So we're gonna look at these picture graph because they do it a lot better. Sam's friends have lost some of their teeth. Yikes! I hope they didn't, oh, they probably lost them because they're growing up, not because they got their mouth punched. Ouch! Okay, let's, let's assume that they're just growing up and they're losing their teeth. He draws a picture graph to show the number of friends who have lost teeth. So this number of, this is showing a heart. And do we think that one person lost one tooth? Well, we have to be careful. What does this key say? Read it with me. Each heart stands for three friends. So what are we counting by every time we see a heart? Threes. So three lost one tooth. How many lost two teeth? Three, six, nine, you could even put that number out to the side on your graph to help you remember what the numbers are. That's a really good math trick to do. Three children have lost only one tooth. Six children have lost three teeth. Three teeth, three, six, yep. So the number of children who have lost blank teeth is the same as those who have lost blank teeth. So which two have lost the same number? Two teeth and three teeth? Well, let's see, do those match up? Nope. One tooth and two teeth? Nope. Which two have lost the same number of teeth? Well, two teeth and four teeth. Three, six, nine, three, six, nine. So you can match the pictures. Sam has how many friends in all? Ah, oh. how are you gonna figure out how many friends he has by looking on here? Well, each heart stands for how many friends? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to count by threes till you get to all the end of all the hearts. That's all of his friends right here in this picture. Let's count. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, and twenty-seven. Okay, we counted by threes and got to twenty-seven. Let's see if we were to take our number of hearts and multiply it times three. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is nine times three twenty-seven? Yes, so we win. Nice job. This one has a challenge that you're gonna need to notice. You don't always get this key. They don't tell you on this one. Mrs. Bishop owns a pet store shop. She starts to draw a picture graph of her pets. It shows the number of each kind of pet. Oh, she has turtles and fish and hamsters and rabbits and cats and birds. Oh my, what a fun place to be. She has the most of one animal is probably maybe the bird. One, two, three, four, five, six little pictures. One, two, three, four, five. So she has more birds than anything else. But we don't know how many she has because each little triangular thing looks like doesn't have the number of animals. So here is your challenge, students. There will be one of these answers, one of some information in one of these questions that will be able to help you calculate what each one stands for. That's what you're looking for. If the, they tell you that she has 20 fish, then you can use this information to figure out that each of these yellow triangles stands for how many animals. She has 20 fish. Okay, let's take that clue, detectives, and run up to the fish. This means 20, because they tell us she has 20 fish. Okay, well, let's see if it means one. One, two, three, four, five. Well, nope. This doesn't stand for one. Let's see if it stands for two. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Nope, because she's got 20 fish. Okay, so let's count by threes. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Did we get to 20? Nope, we gotta keep going. Try fours. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Ha ha! Okay, so that got us to 20. What did we count by, class? Fours. So each of these little pictures stands for four animals. Now you would take your pencil, which you can't write in your book, but you would put the four there. Now you have all the information to keep answering the rest of these. If each one of these stands for four, she has how many more birds than hamsters? Well, let's look at birds, birds, and hamsters. How many more birds than hamsters? Well, we cross that out. That's the same number. How many more does she have? Well, we're counting by four. So four, eight, 12, 16, 20, She's got 20 more birds than hamsters. There are how many cats and birds in all? Well, we got cats and birds. 
Well, we could count by fours. Let's see if we just count all of these pictures and then multiply by four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times four. Oh my goodness, I don't remember. So let's count. Four, eight, twelve. Did you get it? What's four times nine? Thirty-six. Yeah. Okay. She buys eight more turtles. Well, how many turtles does she have? She has three, six, nine turtles. No, we're not counting by threes. We have a four. Four, eight, twelve turtles. But she buys eight more turtles. So she will draw how many more of these on the graph? Well, if these stand for how many again? Four. If this is four and she's buying eight turtles, how many more pictures are you going to draw up here? Are you going to draw eight of them? No, because each one stands for four. So how many are you going to draw? Draw. Well, one would be four and two would be eight turtles. Is that all you need? Yes, so you would draw two more pictures here to fill out this information. This is not something you can turn your brain off and do because they're going to ask you questions so that it shows that you're understanding what each of these numbers represent, pictures represents with numbers. So let's just take one quick look here and then I'm going to let you give it a try on your own. We have a fun graph here on page 229 in your textbook. Turn there so you can see it too. The Information is the second graders visit the zoo. Well, when you guys were first graders, you visited the zoo. But these second graders are visiting the zoo, and they start to draw a picture graph of what they see on the way. Ooh, have you guys ever played that? You play that car bingo where you get to write down what all you see as you're driving? We have that game. It shows the number of cars and trucks they see. Well, they see cars and ambulances and trucks and vans and buses. Well, they didn't see any vans. Well, they didn't pass by me because I got a van. All right, well, let's move on. Each of these little... Cute, this looks like a pawn from a chess set. Who plays chess out there? Uh, I don't play chess, I'm terrible. Well, I play very badly. You could beat me easily. Anyway, we don't know how much this little pawn stands for. It stands for so many vehicles. We can guess, maybe it's one, maybe it's a hundred. We don't know. So we have to use some information along in here to figure it out. Well, let's start with the first question they ask. The children see 25 cars. Okay, so that means each blank, each one of these blue things stands for how many vehicles? Okay, that means they've now given us enough information to figure it out. So each one of these, one, two, three, four, five, has to get us to 25. Can you think of five times what is 25? I have no idea. So I'm gonna use my counting by fives and I'm gonna let my fingers tell me the answer. So I know that I've got five, one, two, three, four, five. So let's count up until we get to 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So what does each blue thing count as? Yes, exactly. Okay, so then how many ambulances do we have? One? No, they saw how many? Five. Okay, how many trucks did they see? Count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20 trucks. Now you're getting the hang of it. You must then come back in here to help yourself and write the number five so that you know through the rest of the questions what you're counting by, okay? They see blank more trucks than ambulances. Okay, well, so we have, they each saw one. So how many more trucks than ambulances did they see? How many more of the pictures do we have? We have one, two, three more trucks. Well, we know we're counting by five, so we have to take that three and multiply it by five. So now you can count by threes or fives. I think it's easier to count by fives. Five, 10, 15. So 15 more trucks than ambulances because you have each of those blue things representing five. They see 15 vans. Ah, so now they have to draw how many of these little blue guys on the graph. If they're gonna be 15 vans, how many blue things are you gonna draw? You tell me. You should draw three there. If you see 10 buses, how many more are they gonna draw on, the, on here? Right here, they only have five. But this question is telling us they see 10. So how many more of these little blue things are you gonna draw? You have five and you gotta get to 10. You're gonna draw five more? No, you're gonna draw one more blue thing because each blue stands for 
five vehicles. And five plus another five would be 10. All right, so we're not gonna go over the last question. Here's what I want you to pay attention to. Um, I wanna see how well you can practice this in the workbook. If you would, I would like for you to go over this page 230 with your mom and page 231 with your mom and just make sure that you're understanding what they're asking. Be sure to look at the key. And then I want you to turn to your workbook B, page 179 to 182. It's going to look like this. The very first graph will tell you how many each picture is, but check the key. Each of these little, um, each of these little buckets stands for two helpings of food. They're gonna give you an example here, and then you're gonna fill in the other questions based on these pictures. But check out over here, This don't let this confuse you. When you get to page 180, there's nothing in the key. You have to figure it out. And I want you to circle number six. Please do that now. As you go down, you'll be able to answer number four and number five. And when you get to six, there's gonna be information here that's going to help you figure out what each book stands for. And when you look, you'll be able to decide what each book stands for. Don't guess, use the information in number six. And then write how many each book stands for right here. Then go ahead and go back and fill in these questions based on what you have determined the key is representing. You have all the information you need to figure it out. When you turn to the last page, you're gonna come up with a little bit of the same thing, although they are going to tell you in the example with what each stands for, but you still have to go back. Your job as the detective is to fill in the missing information here for how many each footprint stands for. How many steps does it stand for? You're gonna get some information and you're gonna answer it here. Okay, I wanna see how well you guys can be detectives. You are pretty good ninjas, but ninjas also have to pay attention to detail. So let's fill that out, have fun with that, and go.